Hello and welcome to the Megan Taylor Creative Podcast, a show for entrepreneurs looking to grow their business with digital marketing. In this episode, I'll be talking you through how I'm going to be planning my content marketing strategy for Course School and beyond and how you can do the same. Let's get started. So in this episode of the Megan Taylor Creator Podcast, I wanted to talk about how you can plan your content marketing strategy for the rest of the year, because as we get closer into November, we're at the end of October now, I'm getting more and more aware that we're closing in on 2023, which doesn't make any sense to me. I have no idea where this year has gone, and I know people generally say that a lot, but I, I I really mean it this year I think especially after how hard the past two years have been 2022 has been a breath of fresh air and obviously it's still hard and we're not out of the woods yet but it's just been a really exciting year I've done a lot of really exciting things both professionally and in my personal life as well the main one that I guess being in my personal life that I finally went on my honeymoon which sounds very strange to say and and now my husband and I, we are happily married and we've been married for three years, which is also mad to say. And we can just kind of live our lives and have normal holidays and not worry about saving for it and look at what we're going to do next. And that's really exciting. And in my professional life, I've had a lot of really exciting opportunities. There's also been some failures as well, for sure. But I think that this year overall has actually, Touchwood, been a really good year and one that when I think about and reflect back on will be like in the top group of years that I've had just because I think it's so nice to feel like we're all in a place again where things are kind of getting back to normal or as normal as they can be in the post-covid world and yeah like everything like events can happen without them stopping and we can actually go out and see our friends and there's always the threat of covid but generally speaking I think everyone's kind of adjusted to this new world that we now live in and that's great for business as well because it means that next year one of the big things I want to do is maybe start working in a co-working space and I don't think that I would have been as comfortable to do that as it as say last year just because I think people were still quite nervous and they weren't as exposed to COVID as we are now and I think lots of us have already had it and we understand like the precautions and understand that it's just I think now just a part of our life that we're going to have to deal with regardless of whether or not we want it to be there so yeah I just wanted to take the time to think about how I'm going to continue to market myself towards the end of the year and how you can do it too because I realized that marketing in the next few months and the Christmas period and just the general festivities going on can be very difficult especially for service providers because I think a lot of businesses that generally do a lot of content marketing throughout the year their Christmas period is two extremes right they're either very busy and very full-on with their campaigns especially product-based businesses or for other say b2b businesses who have worked with a lot of other businesses that tend to kind of slow things down towards the end of the year they might actually not necessarily looking for service providers but I think that the importance of marketing and continuing to market yourself as a service provider in this time is still crucial and it's something that I'm going to continue doing because when people get to the beginning of the year and they're looking at their marketing plans and what the scope of the work looks like and in turn what they need to help them execute their campaigns I want to be sure that my name is front and centre in my niche and my corner of the internet so yeah this is going to be a really fun episode and without further ado let's just get straight into it So in order to actually start planning for the rest of the year, I think the first thing that you need to do, and this kind of goes without saying, 
is you need to look at what your goals are going to be. And your goals and objectives will essentially help you to carve out marketing tactics and campaigns that will actually contribute to what it is that you're trying to do and your overall business growth for that period. But also, I think it will really help you to prioritise where you should be spending time and what channels you should be prioritising, what content you should be making. And this just helps everything feel less overwhelming because you know what content is really going to make the biggest impact. So I always like to do like a goal session like every three months. My goal setting sessions are not nearly as intricate or complicated as a lot of other creators show them to be. I simply just write down three key goals and three key objectives to kind of go alongside that. And just to clarify, goals tend to be more overall goals and they are not necessarily specific, but your objectives highlight your goals and essentially they specify exactly what it is that you need to do in order to achieve your goals. So for example, say if you wanted to focus on generating more revenue, a objective would be something to do with the amount of sales that you need to, to generate uh, the revenue that you have in your mind and the specific revenue that you actually want to make. So that's generally what I like to do. And this year is different to other years because I've discovered Notion. I knew it existed for a really long time, especially in 2020, when I think everyone was trying to get really organised and use that time to kind of figure out new systems and how they can live a better life, especially in a post-COVID world when we would eventually be able to go out and go back into some kind of normalcy again. So I knew of it, but I think like at the beginning and a lot of people experienced this, I was quite intimidated by it. I was using just general notepads or digital notepads and as great as notepads are and just there's something very satisfying and comforting about writing something down in a concrete format where you can actually see exactly what it is that you need to do. A lot of the time, if you don't have a system and I didn't, notes can get lost or confused and it just wasn't that effective. So I decided to switch to Notion because Notion kind of encourages you to set up boards and think about your systems before you actually get started. And then once you've got your system down, you can continue to copy that and mould it into whatever it is that you're planning. And so my content marketing goals specifically live it in my content strategy board, which is a page in the Megan Taylor Creative Index over there on my nation, if you will. And one of the first sections on there is goals and objectives. So I have three goals and three objectives. And to give you an idea of what I'm aiming to do in the next quarter is to boost website traffic and online visibility, to get more website leads and to grow my email list. And obviously, again, these are very kind of general and bigger picture goals, whereas my objectives are to get two new clients by the 31st of December, to get the first 500 website visitors for my new website by December 31st, and to acquire 100 email subscribers by December 31st. Now, these numbers to a lot of business owners may seem quite small, and that's done on purpose because I know what the last quarter of the year is like for marketing. I didn't want to set really lofty goals. I wanted it to be very specific. And also, I actually think that these numbers are too high in some instances, specifically for email subscribers, as I've just got a new website and I know that I'm going to have to do a little bit of work to increase the visibility over there, especially on social media. And I'm not necessarily going to have SEO on my side as, again, it's a new website and I don't have that much content on there yet and none of the content would be ranking anyway. So I need to bear that in mind. That would be a best situation, but I've got numbers in my head that I'm happy with. Also, bear in mind that sometimes when we set numbers, they're like way off. And if they are, that's okay. Sometimes we don't meet the objectives and goals that we set out to do, but it's still good, especially in the new year, to look at what you did and how you could improve. 
So I'm recording this episode assuming that a lot of you actually have your target audiences defined already. And if you do, what I would do is actually go back again and look at your buyer personas and customer avatars that you actually created when you last looked at your content marketing strategy and see if it's still serving your business or if you need to change them. And then I would actually look at that and think about, okay, what content can I create within my specified pillars that will appeal to these specific target audiences and write down those ideas with the description of what buyer persona it appeals to and what content pillar it fits in. You can almost build like a tree of content ideas and I'm thinking about adding this in the content strategy template that I'm building for public use over on Notion and that will be free in my resource library soon. So that should help you get a better idea of how to actually lay that out because this can get very complicated very quickly and I've had this recently with a client who I think is quite overwhelmed with all their ideas and I'm helping them essentially condense how they've laid everything out down. So yeah, definitely take a look at your target audience, look and see whether it's relevant, if you've discovered any new information, maybe you need to tweak your target audiences and your buy personas a little bit more, maybe it would be a good idea as well to put any messaging or previous messaging that has worked for targeted content of that specific persona as well because you can include that as you start planning content and start actually writing content. So along with your target audience and content ideas, you'll want to start thinking about your content channels and also the frequency that you will want to post in the next three months. And specifically around Christmas time, you may actually want to do more than normal or a little bit less, depending on the type of business you are and the customers that you have and whether Christmas is going to be like a really significant period for you. So for example, again, if you're a product-based business, Business and you do a lot of gifting around Christmas and you've got the historic data that shows that Christmas actually brings in a large portion of the year's sales, then you probably need to do a lot of marketing to make sure that you take advantage of that period and the fact that a lot of your customers will be looking to buy what you have, but you still need to make sure that your marketing actually gets in front of your target audience and you need to make sure that you're doing it at high frequency just because of how marketing works and the fact that a lot of the time it can take several goes before people even act on the marketing that you're doing. It can take sometimes seven to eight touch points before your customers will even click on your website. So that's something that you really need to remember. And then also the crazy competition that will be around at that time because everyone else will be doing what you're doing. So you need to make sure that your marketing game is crystal clear if this period is particularly useful to you and I think if it's not I would still continue to market so for example I know that this probably won't be a very busy period in terms of lead acquisition and customer acquisition but I want to prepare for quarter one and quarter two of next year which is typically when a lot of service-based providers like myself get new business in so I just need to make sure that I'm staying on people's radar raising awareness you know it's perfect time for me to launch my site because people can get in touch now if they're thinking in the back of their mind what they're going to do for marketing next year what they need a lot of people start already planning for next year as well especially the kind of medium-sized businesses that have a larger budget will already have their quarter four planned out I mean we're like a month into quarter four so they definitely will have it planned out and the marketing team will start looking at the beginning of the year and what that looks like and whether they need to hire people and often start taking taking the initiative to look for new people now because freelancers can get booked out and they know that so they want to make sure that the freelancer who they want to work with is available so I need to make sure that I'm always kind of visible and that's why increasing my visibility is such a big goal for me because I want to make sure that I'm going to stand out to as many of those businesses that are looking for service providers. So I know I spoke about having an idea tree, but I also think it's really good to have an idea bank somewhere that you can actually store your ideas because you will hopefully 
across Quarterport get more ideas coming in and you can use those for extra marketing activities that you decide to do or even marketing activities for the next year you can start planning and taking those ideas I would really have somewhere that's really simple that really helps you understand what idea is for what channel for what buyer persona and in what format and you may have multiple formats so if you know that that content is going to be repurposed you can put which formats you want that specific piece of content to be and you can even maybe make a note to say that this is repurposed again I have like an idea bank that does this in my notion template and I will get the the notion template up as soon as possible after this episode so that you guys can just start using it so yeah that's it that's everything today I really hope that you found this episode useful and I didn't want to overcomplicate it I tried to simplify how I would approach planning my content marketing strategy for the last bit of the year in a very simple way because I know I get a lot of people that are new to marketing listening to this podcast and I just wanted to make sure that you'd be able to follow along without too much marketing jargon and I hope I explained the concepts well there are several things that I wanted to talk about at the end of this episode the first First is that my new website is finally live. I've worked on it like non-stop this week and I've really enjoyed the project. There will definitely be tweaks and changes made throughout the next couple of weeks but generally speaking that's going to be the new website from now on. And the second piece of news that I wanted to say is that along with the new website I've been thinking about this for a long time because I've actually gotten a few people talk to me about it and ask whether this is something I will consider in the future and I think that as a full service content marketing agency we tend to get people who want complete campaigns come to us but we do get some people who are just interested in content strategy consulting so we will be offering those consulting services as of November 2022 so if you want to look into that I will when I have a link to that I will leave that in the description box and you'll probably be able to find it on my Twitter and obviously on my website as well so yeah as always thank you so much for listening please like this video on YouTube and also So subscribe to our channel as well so you can stay up to date with the podcast. And as always, I will speak to you next week. Bye.